job for you, Sula. C-1249, otherwise known as Sula, a veteran independent mercenary who was active in the star system surrounding Rubicon before the fires of Ibis. Sula is a patient of Generation 1 augmentation, or better said, a survivor, as the technology in its infancy had less than a 10% success rate. Though he escaped the fate of the others, Sula is followed by the specter of death wherever he goes. After receiving his surgery, Sula lost interest in most mercenary work and now lives only for the hunt. While they tried to keep his arena log discreet, the truth of the matter was that he was working for the AI entity known as Allmind, though it's not clear how soon after his surgery this relationship developed. Now, if you're not already aware of how we can definitively say that he was a potential candidate for All Mind's Coral Release Project, it's actually hinted at with the alternate version of the attack on the Watchpoint as he's accompanied by All Mind Stealth Boys, or Ghosts, before it's later confirmed with this image displayed during our briefing for O'Keefe's assassination. Under the list of Gen 1 pilots, we can see that C-1249 is highlighted in the same shade as C-4621 and what is likely Iguazu under the list of Gen 4 pilots. Meanwhile, O'Keefe's listing under Gen 2 has likely been revoked due to the Gen 9 surgery correcting the coral burn-in on his brain and or his betrayal. It seems that the augmentation is using coral in some form or fashion, which would go hand in hand with O'Keefe's condition and the link as to why these pilots were potential candidates for the release project. However, in today's scenario, we'll be exploring what would have happened if Sula took out so many of Walter's dogs that Walter resorted to approaching the Hound Slayer himself in a last-ditch effort to find someone capable of handling his affairs. Now, at this point, Sula is pretty well established with All Mind, so we're gonna take some liberties and say that he was actually ordered to go along with it as long as they deemed it necessary so that they could get more insight on what Walter and Overseer was doing. As for his loadout, All Mind made sure to send him out well-equipped though, as they gave him both the Alpha Bazooka and the Beta Detonating Missile Javelins the three count pulse missiles, and the pulse gun for a very balanced set of weapons. Although he doesn't have an expansion, he does have the bipedal legs of All Mind's Exodia and the Archibus VP series for the rest of the frame. We finish this off with the P06 Speed Thrusters, the P05 FCS, and the VP20C Generator leading to a nice mid-weight build that's leaning towards the lighter side. Also, the color scheme is sick. But with all of that out of the way, we can finally get to our crash landing on Rubicon, where, like usual, we rummage through the wrecks for our licenses, before making pretty short work of the PCA helicopter. Afterward, between RLF, Balaam, and their tested pilot, we go ahead and do some bullying back and forth to open up our spot with the Rud Guns, just to ultimately betray them at the dam. Although, once he sortied to the dam, he felt that there was something off about Iguazu. Since we don't have 621 appearing this run, I'm gonna say that Sula makes his new game plus plus exchanges with Iguazu instead. Hell, maybe he dug up some intel and said something like, You're one of Gen 4's lots. I heard you became a half-decent hound once Michigan slugged you in the mouth. And though we prevail in this fight, All Mind stops him just short of destroying Iguazu's escape pod when he returns his focus of Volta. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
first try! <laughs> Suck it, Volta. Alright, in case anyone's wondering why I pop off here so much, it's because this was one of the first runs I did after the Raven video, so I was just happy to not have to make another death compilation. Although, what was to come was the real menace for every All Mine run with everyone's favorite mission, Escort the Strider. This, however, went way better than I anticipated with the first attempt coming extremely close as the Javelin Bazooka is kind of a menace against both the TTRJs and the Grinder Wheels, but as I took out the last Helianthus, I wasn't in the best shape, so I got caught by some missiles as I tried to make some distance. The next attempt, however, went much better. What the fuck is that? Did you see that? That was some weird shit. That was, like, uh, I think it, like, I don't know, honestly. Carla's words ring in your head. You would have to try and mess this one up now. Oh, I read. Oh, right there, of course. One death. <laughs> yeah, this was a fantastic start to this run, and to come out with most of my AP and a repair kit is such a relief as this mission usually contributes the most deaths to my runs. Afterwards, it was back to bullying RLF once again as we ascend the wall and take out their juggernaut in no time, but before we once again flip flop sides as it was time to instead assist the RLF with their rescue mission where we kind of wipe the floor with Nile once he shows up.
With that out of the way, it was on to the next mission where All Mine probably was just trying to test out the capability of Kate's programming, so we make our way to the boss facility where we wipe out the PCA's lesser forces before we rendezvous for our fight with Mr. Fract and his Urtra Boy entourage once more. Look, it's me jumping down from the watch. Look, this is my... This, this, <laughs> it's like the less fancy watch point. Except I'm blowing this place the fuck up, not really defending it. <laughs> so... We distract two of them, and I'll pick them off one at a time. I should have used the pulse gun right then. Where's the other one? Bro, the javelin is mean. Like, I remember like when I first got that weapon, I was using it a fuck ton as my like my last time weapon. Just a little too slow for that. Kate, uh, holy shit, Kate! Never mind, that one's talking, that one's saying nothing. You, you good. I mean, I was actually about to just say that she's the, uh, one guy from Sword Art Online. But she's basically, like, the guy who made Sword Art Online. She's, like, all mine doing that shit. She's like, I want to play too. I was like, what's that me, is it? Okay, well, um, that was like one of two fights where I've actually seen Kate pull her own weight with the cataphract, but, uh, yeah. Now it's time for the watch point where All Mine has something special in store for Sula. Once he made his way to the main area of the facility, he would find himself face to face with All Mine's first attempt at Mewtwoing their own superior version of a pilot. This was also the first crack in Sula's loyalty as he was no fool. Likely in favor of their newly found 4th gen candidate Iguazu, it was clear that All Mine was ready to toss Sula aside for their new replica as it was even backed up by a handful of stealth boys, but Sula wasn't going to go down so easily.
What? Well, that was outside of All Mind's expectations. Sula not only survived, but completely wiped out the firing squad sent to replace him. Deep down, he knew better than to question All Mind for his own well-being, so he continued on to destroy the device that led to the Coral Surge and Sula's first contact with air. Wait, no. Sula, get out of there! Who are you? An older type of augmented human. First generation. Have we made contact? I am Air, a Rubiconian. Please, you must wake up. Before your consciousness is forever scattered in the coral flow. Hearing air was quite the surprise for Sula, and it was weird. Something felt oddly... correct? But he didn't have time to process this, or having another lady's voice in his head, as Baltese was already at the watchpoint and ready to engage in combat. I've identified an approaching enemy. <laughs> Why not to finish? Yeah, despite originally being there to defend the watch point, I honestly question if All Mine was actually gonna have Sula betray them, as his loadout is perfect for bullying Balteus. But with them out of the way, it was back to the hangar where All Mine relays that the ambush and wait was just a test of Sula's capabilities and to continue following Walter's orders. Here we were told to rest, so Sula finally has some time to think about the weird situation he found himself in when he ultimately decides to follow Air's suggestion to infiltrate Grid 86. Now, for our take on this story, I'm gonna go ahead and say that since Sula had the surgery, he couldn't shake this feeling that there was something calling to him, something driving him to pursue a life beyond that of a simple mercenary, and while all this time he was content with the idea that it was all mine he needed to follow to find this purpose, deep down, something always felt off. That was until he woke up at the watch point with air, and although he was skeptical that this could just be another test by All Mine, he knew that he had finally taken his first step on the right path. Real quick, if you are enjoying the videos, a like or subscribe is always appreciated and goes a long way. I've just been completely floored by the amount of support that we've been getting, and I hope you guys enjoy the content to come, but I'll get back to everything now. Anyways, with the exposition over, it was time to make our run through the grid where we take out Rummy and Nozak along the way without any hassle, before it was time for our fight with the Smart Cleaner, which thankfully goes by really quickly thanks to the Hand Javelin Plasma Missiles and Pulse Gun making for a great combo to get the ACS overload. After that, it was time for the disposal of the hacking drones before we get to have our second fight with our rival candidate Iguazu.
Good job, Iguazu. Can't take it out. Two repair kits left, so I think I'm like doing pretty right. good. Well, that second ambush of Stealth Boys kind of threw Sula off there for a bit. Maybe All Mine really was trying to test and see who was the more worthwhile candidate, but once again, they stopped him short of taking out Iguazu. This led to more questions than answers, but he had little time to spare for these thoughts as it was back to following Walter's orders, which meant that it was time for some laser dodging, then the Sea Spider. Okay, I know the sea spider isn't that big of a threat once you know what it's bringing to the table, but something about Sula's build just works so well together, and out of all the runs I've done up to this point, he is still one of my favorites. But with the sea spider slain, I was done with the stream for that night, so it was time for this run's choice of nostalgic rest music. The next stream, it was back to the blizzards for Balaam, where I run out of EN at the perfect moment right at the start. Oh shit, <laughs> I've never done that. Besides that, it's just our usual run-in with the PCA LCs and warships, so we can move on to our usual run back on the same map so we can have our fight with the HC. And some more LCs. Yeah. Alright, now that we had dealt with everything we needed to there, it was on to taking out Swinburne. However, once Sula arrived, that same feeling he had at the dam started to overcome him, and although it seemed to fade as he got closer to his target, he couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching him. So, I'm gonna go. Oh, my 
boss. You're quick on the uptake, aren't you? Splendid. Death and dishonor, such as the Oathbreaker's due. What the hell are you spewing, old man? Well, it seems like Sula's intuition was right in some regard or another. He wasn't sure if this Roku Monson character was truly a candidate, as All Mine didn't stop him from taking them out like they did with the Kawazu, but he was definitely using an All Mine core for his frame, and he was a step up from your average AC pilot. Unfortunately though for Sula, he was once again short for time to think on these matters, as Walter had already lined up more work for him from Archibus at the refinery plant. Every educated Take out the PCA forces and the energy refinery plant. Swinburne, what are you doing? Did I purposely go to my way to hit that car? Maybe. You are only oh, okay. There we go. So, um, didn't realize I was attacking the melee extra boy there at the beginning, but oh well, still came out pretty clean in the end. Next up, it was once again time to skip over the missile defense so we could be on our way to exploring the xylem. Here, Sula's coral senses start tingling once more, and between that feeling and being ambushed by All Mine South Boys, he knew something was up. Although, he was not anticipating All Mine to directly ask us to take out Dol Mine when he did eventually arrive. I know. It's just like you're a candidate and you're not using the fucking best you can be. Though imagine if he was using assault armor in your fight before Baltaeus and just like, oh my god, please help me. Like for the people who are just not used to this kind of genre of game.
<laughs> so who's gonna make the move? Of course I have to. Gosh dang language. I need to stop doing that. There. I will admit, he does have some schmooze. Well, even if Dol Mayan was a potential candidate, Sula could now see why All Mine didn't care for this chess piece on their board. Regardless of his role, All Mine just saw him as a rabid dog that needed putting down, and well, Sula was just the person for that. Now, in truth, we did not choose this next mission for any story-related reasons. We just rarely get to see it in runs, and we have already fought the Cataphract, so to make up for that, I did actually opt to fight Ring. I didn't realize you could ambush him. I think I have exactly kind of measure for So, let's just say Sula has a knack for noticing when he's being watched, even if they don't have any coral augmentation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the guy that comes in after his next room, He'll barge in and fight everyone as soon as you get to a certain point down there, right? But if you just like take everyone out yourself. You just stay over here and take everyone out first. Uh dude, you know. I'll just fire missiles at you this. No. Now he decides to after I fire the missiles. Did you alright? Sir, is this guy dumb? Culture three, attending C. That AC must be our independent merc. Moving to Germany. Oh shit! No repair kits remaining. Got a little too close there. That last MT didn't die fast enough to prompt the line I was talking about, but the HC will say something about being too late if you take out everyone before you bust through the door. But yeah, that was a bit close with all the fights together, so glad we pulled through with Ring's fight in as good of a state as we did, or that might have been death too. Afterward, it was on to the spaceport, and with the bazooka in hand and our red dashing past everybody, it was feeling pretty char asnable as we go and take out the warships again. Like char asnable, we handled them with no effort whatsoever, so it was on to our second run-in with Rusty, where we'd be taking on the Urcher Boys once again. Honestly, I think if I just, like, didn't get nervous and played everything perfectly, like, from, like, the start, it'd be, uh... 
Why are they both after me? You share the same brain cell and both go to kick. Well, despite us doing most of the heavy lifting there, Sula could still tell that Rusty was an exceptional pilot and, though we didn't get the gut feeling of danger from him, there was something disingenuous about his act, but he enjoyed his company and it didn't impede Sula's path, so he let it be for now. Next up, it was time to take out the Coral Exports, but... Once again, not the most exciting mission, so we'll move on to Bru- Oh. Huh. I forgot I did the damn first here. I never do that, but... Oh well, I'm sure Sula was just excited to face such high marks and wanted to test out his abilities. That was weird. Yeah, if it just let me have that scene play out a little bit longer, or if the cutscene let that play out a little bit longer before it showed up, then, uh, yeah, we would have gotten King right there. Unless there's somewhere I just missed and they do have a reveal. one, but uh, thankfully we managed to keep from adding to that death toll and uh, had quite the exhilarating fight out of it. Still can't put my finger on what it is about his build, but I really enjoy his playstyle. But now it was actually time for our bout with Brute where we ruined this couple's evening along the way. 
Once we make our way to the battleground, yeah, so I briefly show off just a hint of how Anubis weird brute detection uh, is. Exploration of how far you can, because I knew men like I. So I showed him like going over here in the corner, but I did not realize how much you could just fuck with his field of vision. He just does not recognize you. Like when he actually got uh, up there on the ceiling and was just like basically right on top of him, I was very surprised. <laughs> the view here is really nice. I kind of wish this moment could last forever! Delayed reaction to what you said, but... Oh well. He was actually about to propose. So, yeah, if it wasn't clear enough, this run was actually recorded before the Roku Monson video or the no-hit brute strat I showed off in it. I'm basically trying not to repeat any endings before I cycle through the three, so that's why these aren't usually in order of being recorded, but yeah. Just wanted to kind of give that heads up. Anyways, up next was the Ice Worm, so we'll just go ahead and skip both that and the Nepenthes since it's just the same shit every time. We'll just be moving on to the second layer of the depths in our fight with the Assassin Cold Call. Are you coming here? I'm gonna deal with this shit. Well, that was quite the beatdown. You, uh, think they were admiring each other's color schemes during the fight? No? Oh well. Alright, now it was time for the real menace down here as we proceed to have our fight with the infamous Wind Street Killer. I accidentally moved my joystick before, uh, I needed to. What? Why did I just fire, like, straight above him?
Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. I can feel that coming. I was just like, shit. I'm dead. Right, yeah, I knew it. Damn it. Well, up until that moment. God damn it, Enforcer. Honestly, I took some hits I shouldn't have, and though this wouldn't be the last time he'd ruin a streak, this would be the last time he'd be bothering Sula, so let's run this back a second time and show him what he could really do. Yeah, damn it. It was such a good streak. I'm going, bitch. <laughs> Bubble fight. Yeah, see, if you do it against the wall, you'll have extra long stun time, I notice. If he's in a second phase. I definitely think that's an intended mechanic for, like, compensation on his over-fucking-powered bullshit. Out of my face! Alright, yeah, that was much better. Uh, I'm not sure why I couldn't bring that energy the first attempt, but... Oh well, afterwards we breeze through the ephemera mission when All Mine makes another direct request of us. It seems this time our objective was O'Keefe, a current Vesper and a former candidate who had decided to turn his back on All Mine. Despite understanding where O'Keefe was coming from, Sula knew better than to question his decision or else he'd risk ending up in the same position as him. Well, yeah, we're about to whoop this man's butt. Okay, if you viewed your last haul, I will bring the thunder. <laughs> oh, you have some very thunder looking items yourself, sir. Stoop to my level, mister. Mister, what, what, where are you? Are you stuck? What if you time out? Oh, he's finally, why have you been, mister? Think you want core release? Oh, you suck. How many points do you have? Holy shit. I guess you do watch me a lot. I'll interrupt the fight in a second. I 
had to kick him. My hand was get another button. Yeah, I'm sure that wasn't Sula's favorite fight. I feel like after hearing all of O'Keefe's lines, we'd get Sula's Pitiful dog. I feel sorry for you. I really do. But instead of following up with why, he just cuts himself short and says something like Let's get this over with. Afterward, it was time for the survey mission, and when Air told Sula someone was following him, he already had a sneaking suspicion who it was. In the future, let's just kind of like try to, if we do redeem any more of those, I'll okay, yeah, keep it to like a, I'm gonna have to like add it to the thing. But like just something that you either like heard me do, or like that seems like something I can be capable of, super full cool of. Oh my god. I was like, I need to get one more hit on him. Holy shit. God damn, that was really close there with that tag teaming and easily could have been death 3, but I think the AI is either forgiving or everything was on reload and cooldown, but besides that, it felt like a pretty overwhelming win for us. But now that that was all said and done, it was time to move on to the sunken city, and here I always forget I need to not be playing so recklessly because unlike Ibis, you don't get a repair kit, and... In short, it does catch up with us as we inevitably take our third death during the fight with Snail and Iguazu and well, um, the mix fight was going well before I got caught in a combo. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I'm gonna die. Never feels good to go down with three repair kits left. Kind of makes me understand why some people prefer the AP just go back to being a larger AP pool, but oh well, thankfully that would be the last of that.
thought I had it right there, honestly. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, that was much better, both for Snail and Iguazu. Oh well, now it was on to the mayhem that was the MIA mission where... We clear out everything without any issue, and though Sula worked with that Gun 6 character before, he ultimately decided to leave him to fend for himself, but as he was preparing to exit, something was eating at him. Maybe it was all the killing he's done in Rubicon, but maybe just this once, he could help save a life from the actions of All Mine, so he turned back to give Red some help. At least we didn't leave him to die. We just killed him, you know. That's, that's better. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> Great, now Sewell was never gonna help anyone ever again. Also, now that I think about it, technically, if we didn't save Red, more lives would have actually been spared. Uh Pater then shows up in his new fancy LCHM to try and prevent us from taking the elevator out. Honestly, I think this thing needs an upgrade and or a buff. I think I'd just give Pater a PCA hybrid of his AC because I think an improved AI and loadout of his original build would be way more intimidating here. I'm sure this fight will now bite me in the ass in a future video now that I've talked shit, but oh well. All mine goes alien abduction on Sula so we can now wake up at the asylum with a new objective at hand. It was time once again for a stroll through the Xylem, although this time it was the interior, to take out the hacking drones before it was time for Chatty's rather anticlimactic final form. It just feels like there's a lot to be desired for this fight and that they could have changed something about it to make it a little bit more fulfilling for our boy, but oh well, we managed to gain control of the system for All Mine nonetheless. Now, I kinda skipped over developing Sula's relationship with Air, but let's just assume throughout the missions, Air was still digging up more and more about All Mine and informing Sula about everything along the way as she did with 621. At this point, they'd grown so close that Sula was more than confident that this was the path he could feel himself being drawn towards, and after a brief discussion, he made his way to the Exosphere to make his final stand with Air against All Mine, where we of course are met with none other than Iguazu in his new hive mind form. Now that the second to last exposition was over, I can say that, despite doing as well as I did with this build, it would be a bit of a climb to achieve this victory. Though, not nearly as much as, say, the Raven video. The first two attempts were a great start, but ultimately fell short of where they needed to. Oh, you bitch, I didn't time that right. Stop fucking up, baby. Let's 
So promising. Leave a spot for me in hell. Damn it, 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 damn it,
was a lucky not being punched. I got this really cool like these joysticks and like this like pad, like pedals. Makes it makes it feel pretty fancy. I don't know, it makes me feel pretty special glad as long as I you. You get this. No. Oh. oh. Thank fucking god. I was like, don't you dare. That kick didn't go the way I wanted it to. But we got it, baby! How many deaths was that? The freelancer. Quivered it all. Uh, is it less than 15? Yay, less than 15! That's how I felt. I was like, I was like, no, 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 it's over 10. I was like, it's over 10. Probably less than 15. And there we have it. Sula had proven that even a relic as old as Gen 1 was more than capable of exceeding everyone's expectations, that he didn't even need All Mine to reach the calling that drove him throughout all these years, and ultimately that he was the strongest candidate. The visage of death seemed to weigh less on him now, and he was finally content. However, this strange new land he found himself in was a mystery left for another day. Alright, I know I've hyped this run up a lot, so I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll be real, I did already like Sula's design and emblem, so maybe there was some bias, but it really felt like this just clicked with me. Hell, I enjoyed this run so much that I've been really considering doing like a preset AC speedrun with him. Now, if and hopefully when we do get DLC for this, you can be damn sure that he'll be getting a part two. But as for the immediate future, we'll be having the Red Gun Nuzlocke coming up next week, and by then I should have at least started the 2000 sub viewer Nuzlocke, where we'll be seeing if we can make it through all three endings with no OS tuning besides expansions and repairs. If you'd like to see one of your builds in a run, I've actually made a dedicated thread in our challenge run discord for posting the builds. I will be doing more of these in the future as well, so if you don't see your build on the first run, please don't get discouraged. I just want to make sure I'm including everything in the order that they are submitted to be as fair as possible, but there's always a chance that you'll see them on the next roster. Anubis and I also have some things planned for the near future, so if anyone wants to submit bingo ideas here or on the dedicated challenge run thread, we would really appreciate it. Outside of that, I just want to say thank y'all again for all the support and kind words. This and streaming are all I look forward to doing now, and I hope that I can keep bringing you my weird antics and ideas for some time to come. As always, I appreciate everyone so much for coming through, and I just hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Peace.